there, my name is Mena. I'm one of the surgery technicians at Dove Lewis, and today we're going to review how to intubate a cat. So this is Chicken Strip. He's already had a couple of medications just to facilitate doing diagnostics and things like that. Um, so he's a little bit sleepy. He will be getting a couple more medications to facilitate intubation. He is a very small guy. He's less than two kilograms. So we're going to be going at the pretty small tube today. But cats can be a little bit more difficult than dogs in that their airway is much smaller. So we tend to be going with tubes that are less than five French. Um, or less than a five, and they are very susceptible to tracheal tears. So we have to be very considerate of the size that we're placing. Going big or going home is not what we wanna do. We want to be a little bit conservative and maybe on the smaller side. And the placement itself, we have to be gentle. We don't wanna be jamming it in there. Another thing that makes it a little bit difficult in cats is that their laryngeal folds are very sensitive. So they do a lot of fluttering, which can make it difficult to pass the ET tube in. The placement tools are gonna to be still very helpful for cats. We can continue to use a laryngoscope. The blades are just gonna be a lot smaller than dogs and a little narrower. We can use a stylet. The goal of this is to stiffen the tube. The smaller the tube, the more flexible it becomes and it can be difficult to pass down the mouth and into the trachea. So this just adds a little bit of stiffness. We're also going to use a little bit of lidocaine. This is injectable lidocaine, about 0.1 to 0.2 mils is sufficient. And we just put this topically on the back towards the larynx on those folds and it helps minimize some of those spasms that they're doing. A note on how to place these, the stylets is you do not want the stylet to pass beyond the end of the ET tube. This can cause damage to the trachea. So what we're gonna do is you only need the stylet to come to about a centimeter away from the tip. You don't wanna cover this hole. You wanna leave that open. These stylets also come with a stopper to help minimize movement of the stylet in and out of the ET tube. So you can just slide this down until it fits into the adapter on your ET tube. So again, we're not covering this hole. It's not extending past the ET tube itself, and it's nice and seated so that your stylet won't move on you while you're attempting to do placement. We are gonna go ahead and start induction. We are giving the remainder of his pre-meds and we're gonna use propofol for his induction agent today. Propofol is a medication that you have to give slowly. If you give it too quickly, you can cause apnea, stopping them from breathing. So you just wanna be conscious of that. Especially in a young cat, um, we don't want to create a lot of hypotension in these guys. We are going to size our ET tube and there are a couple of different ways to do this. We wanna know the length of the ET tube so, ET tube so we're not over intubating. The best way to do that is to find the point of the shoulder or the thoracic inlet. That's where the end of your ET tube goes. And with mild extension, you wanna to go to about the tip of their nose or their canines. So on this guy, we're probably gonna be about 11 centimeters. Another thing you wanna consider is the size of the ET tube itself. The best way that I found to confirm the size of this ET tube is to palpate the trachea itself and get an idea of how large it is that way. And then of course, when we're placing it, we'll be able to visualize the back of the mouth and have an idea is, is this the correct size that we want? Another thing that we've considered in advance, and this is important for very small pets and cats, is a lot of these tubes come much longer. There's a lot of dead space and we wanna make it shorter. So I've already pre-cut these down to an appropriate size for him using some dog nail trimmers and moving the adapter for the ET tube further down. Dead space just adds to the difficulty of them being able to move gases and respirate appropriately. So we'll go ahead and get started. We've already leak checked our anesthetic machine. We've done the safety check. We have an emergency drug sheet. That way, if we do have an emergency during the placement of this, um, we're ready with all of the information we need to do any rescue procedures. It's important to lubricate the end of your ET tube. One, for the smoothness of the placement. 
also the lubricant can act as a seal for any little spaces in the cuff when we inflate it. Even for ET tubes that do not have a cuff on them, it's still important to do a little bit of sterile lubrication on the end, again, for that ease of placement. Okay, Zach, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're gonna be begin induction with our propofol. I'm just gonna give this slowly and a little bit at a time to effect until he's not chomping. I know, hi honey. Until he's not chomping. We do give our cats midazolam and that can kind of um, make them think that they're hungry. So sometimes they'll chomp on fingers or things that are around him. They get a little bit dysphoric sometimes, but we'll just continue to give that propofol to ease that effect. And the goal here is that we want him to relax enough that he does not have a swallow reflex and that we can safely get into his mouth. Okay, so Zach's gonna sit him up in a neutral position. This is gonna be the easiest way to intubate any pet really, but especially with cats. And Zach's gonna move his fingers just a little bit. We'll take the tongue, we'll pull it out of his mouth and down, get really good visualization. I use my laryngoscope to take a peek down here. And Zach, I'm gonna have you tilt his head down. Perfect, thank you. So you can get some nice visualization in the back of the mouth. I'm gonna put our lidocaine in the back to help with some of those laryngeal spasms. Give him a little bit more propofol here, a little bit of a swallow reflex. Can I adjust my fingers real fast? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to take a peek in the back here. Matt, I'm going to get in front of you a little bit. We're going to check and make sure that this is an appropriately sized tube before we attempt to intubate. I do think this is a generously sized tube, so I am gonna go down a size. This ET tube that I'm dropping down to does not have a cuff on it. Again, we still want to lubricate these. Just doing the end, trying not to cover the hole there. And this can also use a stylet. Okay, we're gonna do another try. Again, keep in mind that measurement that you took for the length, therefore the depth that you're gonna place it. You don't wanna over intubate. At this point, it's a little bit of a waiting game. There are still some spasms present and it's just timing it in such a way that you can get down in there. Okay, we have passed in. We're going down to about our 11 that we gauge this. Stylet needs to immediately come out. Hold on to your ET tube as you pull it. If you leave that in, it's actually obstructing their airway and they cannot breathe. We're going to secure our tube. If there is a cuff on your ET tube, make sure that you do not catch the inflation line or you will obstruct that flow. Zach, watch your fingers. Okay. In kitty cats, we usually tie behind the head. If you're doing a scope, you might tie it to the bottom jaw. But because they don't have much of a muzzle like dogs do, you can't typically tie it on the top of their mouth. We're gonna confirm our placement here. And then we should be ready to start our procedure. All right, so doing our leak check, um, so trying to hold a breath for him, the pressure did not hold on my manometer, and you can actually audibly hear 
gas leaking around the ET tube. So we are gonna go and try um, up a size on our ET tube. It's, um, you know, in kitties every once in a while, because of the difficulty of the placement for these guys, you might need to try once or twice to intubate them. But it is important to limit the number of times that you are attempting to intubate. So if you're, for whatever reason, not successful, don't be afraid to pass that off to another individual to try. Especially in kitties, you increase the possibility of tracheal tears. I have a little bit better visualization this time. Um, my personal preference, I don't prefer stylets. Um, but again, it's all about understanding what tools and aids you have to facilitate it. The placement of your ET tube. There we go, good job, buddy. This tube does have a cuff on it, so I'm gonna make sure that I don't accidentally bend or kink that. Oh, goodness. So I'm gonna go just behind that little line. going to gently set his head down and we're going to do another leak check. Another excellent way to do your leak check if you have the ability is a capnometer, capnograph and what we're looking for on our monitoring equipment is that we start to see these little complexes here. If you can't see these you're likely intubated into the esophagus or your patient's not breathing on his own. So we do want to see those. Doing another little leak check on his ET tube to make sure the cuff is inflated safely. And we can listen. You do not want to blindly inflate your cuff because you can over inflate it and put tension and pressure on the endotracheal tube, or on the trachea, excuse me. We are seeing waveforms with our capnograph. You can see they're nice little peaks. If they're sloping at the end, there's a leak and you might have to consider going up a size. Um, but we have safely created an airway that's gonna help make our surgical procedure a lot easier and safer for chicken strip. And that's how we intubate cats at the Lewis. <laughs>